Welcome to Health Fix. Today, our topic will be vitamin D and its role in curing eczema. We will look into what the vitamin D is, how does it influence eczema, where to get vitamin D from, as well as what are the optimal levels of vitamin D in your body. Let's dive right in. Vitamin D is crucial for our overall health, it is a fat-soluble vitamin that is essential for human body. It is unique among vitamins because our bodies can produce it when exposed to sunlight. Vitamin D has multiple functions in our bodies, including bone health, cell growth and regulation, inflammation regulation, and immune system support. The last two functions, specifically inflammation regulation and immune system support, are the two functions we will take a closer look at. Starting with immune system, vitamin D acts as a regulator for the immune system. It helps ensure that your immune responses are balanced and appropriate. In the context of eczema, this means it can help calm down the overactive immune responses that contribute to inflammation and itching on the skin. Second function is antimicrobial peptide production. This fascinating function is that vitamin D promotes the production of antimicrobial peptides in the skin. These peptides are like natural antibiotics, helping to fight off harmful microbes and potentially preventing skin infections, which are common in eczema flare-ups. Third function is inflammation reduction. Eczema is characterized by inflammation of the skin. Vitamin D has anti-inflammatory properties. It helps by down-regulating the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines, molecules that promote inflammation. This leads to a significant reduction in the redness, swelling, and discomfort associated with eczema. Fourth function is skin cell differentiation. Vitamin D also contributes to the differentiation of skin cells. In eczema, there's often an imbalance in the production and shedding of skin cells. Vitamin D helps regulate this process, promoting healthy skin cell turnover. Fifth and final function is prevention of infections. As mentioned earlier, vitamin D encourages the production of antimicrobial peptides. These peptides are part of the body's defense system against bacteria, viruses, and fungi. By bolstering this defense, vitamin D may help prevent secondary infections that often complicate eczema. Enjoying the video so far? Hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. Doing so will allow us to help even more people. Ensuring you get enough vitamin D is essential, and there are a few primary sources to consider. The best and also most natural source of vitamin D is sunlight. When your skin is exposed to UVB rays from the sun, it can synthesize vitamin D. However, the amount you produce depends on factors like your location, the time of day, and your skin type. Aim for about 10 to 30 minutes of sun exposure on your arms, face, and legs a few times a week. Be cautious not to overexpose to avoid skin damage. While dietary sources are relatively limited, there are foods that contain vitamin D, for example. Fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, trout, and sardines are good sources of vitamin D. Eggs, specifically the yolk, contain some vitamin D. In cases where it's challenging to obtain enough vitamin D through sunlight and diet, supplements are a great option. While it is rather easy to get enough vitamin D during summer, as the year progresses it becomes harder and harder, especially during winter months. These supplements are available in various forms, including vitamin D2, vitamin D3, with added compounds or on its own. The ideal supplement to go for is combination of vitamin D3 and K2. Vitamin D3 is generally considered more effective in raising blood levels, and vitamin K2 will ensure calcium in your blood is going into your bones, instead of clogging your arteries. Dosing of vitamin D supplements is slightly more complicated compared to other supplements. Most commonly recommended doses range from 1000 to 5000 IU per day. In order to pick the correct supplement dose, the only reliable way is through a blood test. 
The optimal levels you should aim to achieve are around 60 nanograms per milliliter, which equals roughly 150 nanomoles per liter. More videos are coming, subscribe if you don't want to miss it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.